Call of Duty is in desperate need of some major statistics in regards to what people are looking at at the end game screen. In its current state, Call of Duty basically only has a couple of features in the end game. You only see how many kills a person gets. That's fine. I like how many kills someone gets. That shows, you know, in so many other games like League of Legends, CSGO. So many games you can see how many kills you get. That's fine. That's pretty much universally renowned as an okay statistic to show. Deaths, okay. You know, some games like Destiny, they won't show your deaths. But they'll show your KD. So you could, if you really cared enough, look back and see like, oh, I, did, I got this many kills. I died this many times. You could work it out backwards. But they don't want to show you that. But Call of Duty does, so you see your kills and deaths, and you can you can also see assists, which are a little murky in itself. You may do more damage to a person, and then your teammate kills, steals you, and that sort of thing. So there's only statistics in Call of Duty that I wish were there but aren't. And because of that, we only get to see really the surface of what a team dynamic is really like in competitive Call of Duty. We only look at the scoreline. We're like, this team blew the other team out 250 to zero, or this team, this one player on this team drop a 50 bomb he's super hard carry the game we can make these generalized statements and for the most part will be true and we'll be accurate with it, what we're saying but we'll never be a hundred percent accurate we won't be exact we won't be exactly knowledgeable because we don't have as analysts the tools exact like needed to indicate exactly what the issues are for a certain team or how a certain team is winning in certain situations what a dynamic of a team is like who's doing the most damage per team so as i sort of list off some of my ideas as necessary statistics in call of duty Think about it in two respects, one being how those statistics are looked at in a team perspective. So if I take damage done, you look at that as a team perspective versus the other team, how much damage your team is doing versus the other team, that's one way of looking at it. Or you can also look at individuals on each team. If one player is doing this much damage, you get to see based on this how many, how many, uh, how much percentage of a person has on his team in terms of damage dealt. That's one of the statistics I want to see in terms of helping us understand these various team dynamics. And I think it would be mo the most crucial if any, if you take any of these statistics in mind at all, if anyone in the development team is looking at this video, the one statistic I want you to take away and sort of acknowledge and try to implement in Black Ops 3, hopefully if it, you know developer support is there, is the damage done because we actually get to analyze so much more. We can see the percentage of a team's damage done from a certain player or just the damage overall, like I mentioned earlier. So let's say uh, in a hard point, each, each player will drop 30 kills uh, that means you get a hundred point. You get a hundred points in your damage per kill. So let's say a person has hundred health. You kill one guy. That's a hundred in your uh, damage done. Let's say you get an assist in there. That's another plus fifty. So if each person gets thirty kills, we'll do the math quickly. One hundred twenty thousand, uh, I believe. One hundred twenty times one hundred, so twelve thousand. And then we'll tack on another three thousand for the assist that you could get. So fifteen thousand is the total damage done from one team. That's the winning team. Now we can actually look at. We can break that down. Now, how are they getting this 15,000? Is it, is it coming in equal portions? Is 7,500 coming from these two players and 7,500 from these other two players? Or is it 7,000 from one player and the other the 8,000 from the other three? Is one player super hard carrying this game? Is he doing a lot of damage to give his team the chance to make these plays on the OBJ happen to win them the game? Or is it a team effort? Is the OBJ going off in this one game? There's so many things we can analyze in regards to who's doing the damage. And if we can actually see like, okay, in this game, enable, he crushes it. He gets so many kills in this hard point, but they still lose because his team wasn't putting as much damage. He had 70% of his team's damage. The other three players had 30% between the two, three of them. That's why they lost against OptiGaming and Solar Hardpoint. That could be a random statistic. That's not accurate, maybe in its current state, the way I worded it and the actual example I used. But you can see how this statistic could be valuable, could be influential in terms of analyzing a game, in terms of understanding what a player is having, how what impact he's having. Maybe people are like, Zuma is a god. This guy does so much for his team. He's getting so many kills. He's making these first bloods happen. But let's say we look at that. Maybe Zuma is getting a lot of kills, but maybe he's not doing a lot of damage. Maybe he's kill stealing every single one of his kills. We'll never know that because we don't know how much damage is being done in total. So really, at the end of the day, he could be doing 2,000 damage, but because he's getting 20 points off of each of them, I don't know, those are random numbers, I guess, he could be getting so many more kills than his teammates because of the way he's playing. Because I think that would be 20 kills. So because of the way he's playing, he's able to get those kills by not doing much damage. Now, that's something we wouldn't know just by looking at KD. We only get to see kills, deaths, and, th and the assists. So we can only sit, think, okay, this guy's definitely influential in a lot of gunfights. He gets a lot of assists. But maybe the other guy's more influential. He gets a lot of kills, but he doesn't get a lot of assists. Or maybe this guy doesn't get a lot of kills, but he has a lot of impact in the other kills. 
which doesn't reflect in the assist necessarily. I mean, you can see how many different ways you can look at it. Like, if you say, okay, this guy's got a lot of kills, but he was getting a lot of those kills off his teammates who do, who do most damage. Now we get to actually analyze that and see, like, okay, the real hard carry of this game was Scumpy. Maybe Crim6 had a really good game this game. Maybe he had that high KD. Maybe they had that stat line. Maybe he was the hard carry of that game. But if we can, like, look at this over time, too, we can see, it, like, the percentage of a team's damage over time just total up the damage done, divide it by whatever... Uh, what would be damage over minutes something so damage per minute and or total damage as a team done you can see what a player's impact could be so if every so if there's four players on a competitive roster and each player is putting in equal amounts of effort and equal amounts of work they're all equally skilled let's just take a perfect team each player will be doing 25 percent of the team's damage so in every gunfight they'd be doing 25 percent of the enemy's damage maybe that doesn't work you know logistically in terms of playing the game but let's take that as an example now, if we can look at that team that, as our median and say that's what an average think team would be like, now let's look at another team. Maybe on a team like uh, Rise, okay? Maybe Apathy, he'll have like a 40% per, uh, damage percentage done for his entire team, whereas the other three players may have a 60% overall. So you can see how much impact these statistics can have on the way we analyze the game, analyze certain players, analyze teams as a whole see who is the better player who is the better team in overall senses obviously players are going to have off games but it's going to show in the statistics because it may decrease right you'll see that percentage waver a little bit we'll see that 40 percent become a 33 percent become a 30 percent and then become a 25 average out maybe the teams become better over time that'd be so interesting to see we could see something like a player's percentage damage done over time and you can like, correlate that with their placings maybe when they got knocked out at uh gfinity and uh, before they get made to round of eight in the group stages, maybe they're not a top 16 team. Maybe beca because of, you know, the way the statistics work, Apathy at this point, so at Gfinity, I don't have a graph, I can't make something like a graphic for you guys, I'll do my best to explain it. So maybe at Gfinity, Apathy gets a 40%. Maybe at the next event, he'll get 30%, but they'll place higher. Maybe at the event after that, they, he does 25% and they win the event. Maybe that statistic could exist. Maybe we could look at these graphs and chart and understand how teams are functioning, what the dynamic is like, how they're working together. And if we don't have the statistics, we can't make those speculations. We can't understand and look at it because in all honesty, statistics are so cool to talk about, especially in esports. If you look at League of Legends, the analysts hone in on so many different things that have huge impacts. Like in League of Legends, vision's a huge part of how you win the game at a super, at a super high level. So a lot of the vision statistics that are out there are like, uh, wards cleared, uh, amount of wards placed as a team, wards placed per minute, that sort of thing. So you can see, and also you can look at certain instances of where there's so many wards in X amount of part of the map and not many wards in the other part of the map. Sorry, I got a tweet right there. So you can see how influential these statistics can be in analyzing the game. So not, it just, you know, can't just look at, at you know, at the surface level. You can't just look at a KD and be like, that guy was a hard carry. Uh, that's the only generalization we can make now, and that's the safest bet we can make. Scumpy got a 44 bomb on Yemen hardpoint. He was a hard carry. He probably was, to be honest. We can't take that away from him. But we'll never truly know, guys, because we don't have that damage done over minutes. So if we can see like a player like Scumpy, maybe he's a player that gets 500 damage a minute because he's doing damage, enough damage to kill five players in a single minute. If we extrapolate that into a full game... That may be a 50 bomb, but maybe he's getting more assist than he has kills in some instances. So maybe he, be getting, he, he is getting that 44 bomb, but we, he's doing the damage to 50 players. We can understand now how these players function as a team. Maybe they just work so well together that he's not he doesn't need to clean up these kills. His team is supporting him in a certain way. That is so crucial to understanding the team dynamics. So like a team like Opti Gaming, FaZe, people can look at their statistics and see how the team functions. Maybe they're all 25% across the board. Maybe... They're not. Maybe it's a two hard carries. Maybe it's a 40% here, a 30% here, and the other players div divvy the 30% up amongst themselves. We'll never know, though, because we don't have them in-game. Also, uh, uh, coupled with the damage per minute and that sort of thing, we can see damage over time. So maybe a player like uh, Zuma, or maybe, okay, so let me bring up an example of myself. So I remember I played a game of Advanced Warfare uh, when, I was in, when I was back playing competitive a little bit. Um, it was a game of Hardpoint Solar. I start at 1 and 11, probably in the first four or five minutes of the game one in 11 that's probably my worst stat line in any instance of any call of duty i've played even in snd i don't think i've ever gotten one in 11 probably one of the worst performances I've, I've had but i picked it up in the last five, five minutes or so of the game and i went neutral and we ended up winning so if you think about this in perspective i didn't do i did little to nothing in the beginning part of the game but i crushed it in the later part so we can analyze that and say 
this guy just did he just didn't he just played poorly maybe his team was being out rotated maybe they didn't have proper positioning maybe they weren't trading effectively maybe he swapped to an smg maybe he was that was the issue we'll never know that though because at the end of the game people just look at he went neutral so he did average he did okay and they'll look at the player who's like five positive but who slowed down towards the end of the game so even if you look at it sort of like in a mathematics perspective that's what statistics is all about is mathematics if you like take the derivative now that i hate saying that word because i hate calculus but think about it in terms of slope so in the beginning of the game i was sloping really hard i was only doing this amount of damage very stagnant only occasionally spurting up but then falling taking a lot of damage myself but in the latter part of the game that spikes completely i completely crush it i start getting two three pieces that are winning our team break offs that are putting letting our obj players get in the hill and get those times to push out the enemies and put those cuts out get that sweet sweet time that you need on those really important hills like the fourth and or the third and fourth hill in hardpoint solar we'll never know that though without those statistics i'm going to keep citing that and keep mentioning those couple words because if you don't have the statistics we can't make these speculations we can't do it only manually it's there's too much to look at obviously there are casters that are able to do it pretty well they can you know pick out specific examples but as a whole i think it's a better idea to have it as an in-game built feature you know you can see all these statistics as it happens so you know also uh another idea i had in regards to damage is damage taken so you can compare damage done to damage taken so maybe you're an obj player who takes more damage than it's given uh that they give out that's fine but maybe they're still winning games so you can see how that reflects on the team as a whole and how much percentage of damage they're doing in regards to the team so maybe they're only doing 20 percent of the team's damage but they're winning every single game because of the slayers are picking up the other slack we'll never understand that dynamic without damage taken and damage done also you, you can see damage taken from different positions so the objs are taking more damage because they're right in the thick of it and ars are taking less damage so you can see if ar players who are supposed to sit back and supposed to get these high kd gameplays a uh, game sorry they're getting these massive damage efficiency ratios that would be comparing damage done versus damage taken they're getting these massive stat lines because that's the role they're playing it to a t so now we can compare players into these different positions so if i take a formal and take a clayster from op from phase or optic and phase respectively we can now look at their damage efficiency and look at how well they are and how well they play on certain maps and certain positions in these roles you can see guys i'm like completely mind blown that I, I mean, people definitely have thought of this, but like that no one's like trying to bring this out into the competitive esports scene because look at how much I can already analyze just by sitting here at my desk speculating, making this. I'm just making it up on the fly as I go. If you actually had you know proper analyst team at the actual desk and being able to analyze these things, like from minute two and three, Clayster did awful, but three to nine carried the game. Damage efficiency from these points was massive. He had the most damage outputted here, and then from this point on. Formal didn't have a really good performance, but Scumpy picked it up, but he couldn't hard carry because they didn't have the dynamic that they needed. Now we can look at their wins and see how they're winning, what the ratios are like when they're winning. Maybe we can also look at the, ra the ratios and how they're playing when they're losing and look at those statistics then. Mind blown, guys. There's so much you can think about when you talk about statistics that it's just like, if you had them, it's so there's so much creative freedom in regards to how you can talk about teams, how they're winning. It's not the, sale, the same stale thing. Oh... Mochilla had a really good KD this game. He did really well. He stepped up when he needed to make those clutch 2-3 pieces. Maybe he wasn't making those clutch 2-3 pieces. Maybe he was getting a lot of help from his teammates and the stat line doesn't reflect the way his teammates were playing. I mean, I just want the truth to come out in Call of Duty. I want, you know, I mean, like, analyzing Call of Duty and, like, in esports in general is, like, talking about the truth of the situation and what it took for a team to win maybe a player actually made a mistake and the, if the analyst doesn't catch that and thinks of it as an outplay then you never actually get to know the full truth of it, if, that, if you guys understand what i'm saying so if we get these statistics we can analyze more accurately in these situations so you know talking about those statistics i want to bring some downsides to the idea i brought up because it's not completely flawless you know in call of duty we do have health regeneration so that could be fault that could be really faulty you know players may be doing more damage than they normally would be because they're just lighting up a bunch of players but they're not actually doing they're not actually finishing off the kill the kill doesn't the damage they're doing doesn't have an impact really so if it was a game like csgo where you take out 80 percent of a guy's health that guy's gonna have 20 percent of his health for the rest of the round or for the rest of his life that's interesting to me that's a different topic entirely so I, I think there's still a I think there's still a room 
there's still good room and there's a really important place for the statistics to fit in of damage efficiency damage done damage taken because even with the regeneration we can still probably take averages and compare like top slayers versus top objs and see how they're doing in regards to their damage efficiency all these statistics and maybe the regeneration health will be a bit of an issue we'll have to see in the future but if it's not implemented we'll never know guys we can't make these speculations happen if you don't have it in place so that's one of the reasons why I'm making this video. I want the word to get out there a little bit and at least share some of my thoughts. So another you know, small statistic you can throw out there is like equipment use. So a lot of players, you know, they'll throw some Texas constantly. Maybe it'll have zero impact. Maybe they'll get two kills every 10 some Texas they throw. That's not a very good stat line. But another player, he gets five kills with every 10 some Texas he throws. Maybe he's throwing them in the right spots. You can learn from that player who has got the higher uh, equipment efficiency statistic because of the way he's playing you can see you can analyze you can break it down you can actually look at the ways the guys are using it because if you give value to every little thing a person does you can start breaking down the, the very fundamentals of call of duty and be like okay this player does this in this way because right now in the current state it's basically it's kind of a high it's kind of a high skill gap uh, in terms of like understanding call of duty at the professional level because a lot of casual players who want to watch it are going to be sat there like oh this guy got a really high kd he must be a very good player he's the best player on the team that may not necessarily be true they're getting the wrong perspective and at a surface view you're just looking at the gamer uh, at the last uh the gamer card you're looking at the um scoreboard at the end of the game but if you had these statistics casters could be like this guy did well but this and this and this and this is the reason why they won at this moment at minute five this player super spiked and he didn't do as well but he still had high kd we can do all this and we'll have the actual truth come out of how players are doing in terms of statistics another thing i'd like to see accuracy so we can compare accuracy with various players so players like formal and clayster we can look at who's the most accurate battle player in the game or you know who's the most accurate smg player who has the most uh who has the least accuracy who's the worst player in terms of their gun skill that's information that we want to know we can be like all right and so if it's a 1v1 between We'll call it Nate Shot just because he's a doll and he's awesome and I love him. But you can have Nate Shot maybe not have the best accuracy in terms of gun skill versus a Scumpy. So we can look at that. We can analyze that and we can see how they're impacting the game. Maybe Nate Shot is still doing really well because his OBJ prowess in terms of stats and OBJ. I'll talk to talk to uh, talk about that a little later. But maybe we can actually understand like what the damage you know done correlates to with the accuracy. So if a person's more accurate. They're probably gonna have more damage done, right? So we can just see how that correlation happens, you know, the damage output, etc., etc., etc. So another statistic I like to see. Now jumping into the OBJ section I just mentioned, I'd like to see stats like time in hill or like time with the objective. So that could be sorry. I've been doing this for a bit of time, 17 minutes here. So we can have a statistic like how much time you're in the hill. So if a player like Karma is supposed to be the OBJ for optic, or he's supposed to be the filler player, is he getting more time than Scumpy? Or is he just doing bad overall? We'll never know. We'll never be able to say, like, oh, Karma's doing his role. He's just not having a good uh, event in terms of his accuracy and his damage done. So that's a different separate issue entirely. But we can see how they relate together, right? Now we have a full perspective. We have the full picture. We can see Karma has more time on the hill than any of the other players on Optic. He's not getting many kills. That's fine. We see because they're still winning the game, right? That's all that matters, really, at the end of the day, how they're winning the game and that they are winning the game. If Karma has a lot of time in the hill, not many kills, not much damage output per minute, damage per minute done, that's fine because they still win. We get to analyze that. We get to say, this is what happened right now in the current state. We can just say, oh, Karma, yeah, he's supposed to be the OBJ. So if he's doing poorly, it's just because the other slayers and Optic are really crushing it. They're really doing well. You can make up these excuses and that sort of thing. When we analyze, and if we had these details, like, like I'm mentioning, that's not going to become an issue. We're going to be able to say, Karma did have an underperforming event because he wasn't able to get in the hill. He wasn't able to get those cr crucial kills. He wasn't able to do much damage, even if he's outside the hill. We get to analyze that. We get to understand, and we get to see the full truth of a situation. We don't just generalize and miss, you know, have some misconceptions. You remember Enable when he was in Optic Gaming? He came out and said he had a poor event, even though he was getting like a 0.9 KD or something around those lines at ESWC. Not a bad performance, even if you're considering everything involved. And he's still saying he didn't perform well. Maybe if he if we had these statistics that I'm mentioning, he would say like, yeah, look at my damage per minute. It's not as high as I'd like it to be. Even though I'm getting an okay KD, my teammates are doing so much better in terms of the percentage of damage that they're doing. Maybe they're getting 83, 85% of the damage for, between the three of them. I'm only getting 15%. We can analyze that, guys. It's so important that we have these tools because otherwise we're not getting the full picture. 
So yeah, uh, uh, in terms of OBJ stats again, the contested time, the hill with the uh, time in the hill. Sorry, if it's uplink, you know, time with the ball, time spent holding it, uh, throwing the ball. You know, you can see those points again. Uh, the captures and hard point, the defends. Probably want those more flushed out a little bit. See how those are impacted. I don't really understand fully the defense system. If it's if both players have to be in the hill or if it's one player outside one in. So hopefully we can clear those up a little bit. And if a development team like like uh you know Treyarch comes together and like takes these statistics into consideration, like wants to make a really full fledged game in terms of competitive, they would implement these. They would be able to do more than I'm even mentioning now because I'm struggling to talk about everything that I'm even like thinking about as ideas because there's so much more you could talk about. You could talk about exo movements in call of duty how that's impacting how a team is winning if the percentage of uh time like in terms of like heat maps so let's say a team gets the most percentage of kills in this hill how that translates into them winning you can see how much points a person's getting per hill because right now we all have to do that manually and it's just not as reliable you know sometimes you get the wrong statistics sometimes we don't even get to see how a team does in an event up until like the rounds that are actually streamed because there's not enough staff available so if these features were all built in you can see how much fun an analyst would have, guys. So, like, if you think about it, like, remember, like, E6? Maybe they had a super easy road up until that point. Maybe the other teams they were playing against weren't good at all. They weren't having much damage. They were just steamrolling. Maybe their accuracy wasn't as good at all, but they were still doing the most damage because the other team's accuracy was even worse. So we can compare those regards. Maybe E6 wasn't the good team at the time, but maybe they were. But we'll never know because we don't have every little detail. We can only speculate and generalize. Uh, another statistic I'd like to see is a comeback short statistic. So that could be like in regards to like if a team is down at five minutes in hardpoint, if they're down by a margin of like 30, do how what's the percentage chance that they come back from that deficit? You can also do that with S&D and their comeback. So like if you're down 06, what percentage of the time do you win this game? Or if you're down by three or four, like you can see how, you know, you could like if, if, if I, I know in Call of Duty now, they're starting to become the little betting sites. Betters would like to probably put their money on teams that can have those higher probability chances in coming back or they're probably going to bet on teams with the largest s d wins in their margin so if we're not all recording this manually and if it's recorded in the system itself you can see you know analysts betters players casual players can look at these things and be like i want to strive to hit that goal because if my accuracy gets to this point or if my damage per minute gets to there or if my uh damage efficiency gets to this point if my uh equipment use becomes there like you'll become a better player and these are very like statistical ways of analyzing how you can better your own game. It doesn't have to be this like very like vague, you know, blanketed statement like you have to trade your kills, guys. You have to make sure you're playing with your team, make sure you're pushing down the same lanes together, make sure you're communicating, you're not getting turned on, that sort of thing, you know. Come on, it's such a, you know, like cardboard way of saying like, yeah, look at the way these guys playing, play to this style, analyze like if you have these statistics, you don't have to use these blanket statements anymore. Then we can get better analyst teams. We can put together more constructive and informative information, uh, informative segments in our actual shows or at LAN events. The analyst desk won't just be this guy stood out because you know he had 40 kills and 20 deaths. That may be true, but did he have the most damage? Can't analyze that without the statistics available. Uh, some other stats that I've just thrown in at the end here for S and D that could be interesting is like first blood. So player like Zuma, you want to see how much first bloods he's getting. We can only do that manually now, and you can only really see the first bloods among the top teams. So if we had it built in, that's not an issue at all. You can just see, like, as a player, like, I really have, am having a huge impact as a as a and d player. I'm having a lot of first bloods in my team. I'm doing a lot of damage. I'm trading a lot. You can see how influential it can be. As a growing team, you can look at these stats and be like, this is what we're doing wrong. We're doing uh, too much... Uh, solo play we're not matching together our damage per minute as a team should be this whereas right now it's this you can see i'm just gonna i i like my voice has become so hoarse at this point that i'm like trying to just like you know shove every like shove everything down throw like yeah this is correct this is totally right i may not be totally correct guys you i may be wrong about this so definitely let me know in the comments down below what your thoughts are as well i want to hear what you guys have to say maybe there are other statistics that i'm leaving out that are super that are even more critical than damage done or damage taken or that sort of thing so Definitely leave that in the comments as well if you've made it to this point in the video. But overall, I mean, you can also like look at an SD also clutch situations. That could be cool. Like, how many times is this team clutching 1v2s, 1v3s, or this player, that's etc. etc. So, overall, all of these statistics should be taken into the consideration of how it can be applied to a team. So, how a team could be doing, how it's, you know, like if the damage done as a team is lower than another team, then they have less chance of winning. 
and then you look at it individually as well, that also helps understand the team dynamic. How much percentage of a team's damage is a person doing, what their accuracy is like, what the other player is doing in the OBJ side of things. Mind blown, guys. If these statistics don't exist, we're going to have to do with the same old generalizations that aren't as accurate as I'd like them to be. It's been Uxter. Take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching. Leave in the comments down below if you guys have any other thoughts. Peace.